Have you made money mistakes in the past? Do you know why you made those mistakes? Do you ever sometimes think that maybe it's just you? Don't worry about that. We're all a little bit weird when it comes to money. We're not wired really to deal with it. Learn more right after this. Welcome to this week's Money Health Conversation. This is Derek Hagan, Certified Financial Planner, Chartered Financial Analyst. Each week I talk about a new personal finance, behavioral finance, or financial psychology topic using everyday items around my office to help demonstrate the idea. You can learn more at moneyhealth.blog. This week, we're going to talk about how our mind helps us make money mistakes. So when it comes to making financial decisions and how our brains are kind of wired, we, we really weren't made to think long term. All this personal finance stuff is foreign to our brains. Our brains do better at survival. So when it comes to making big money decisions or weighing complex trade-offs, uh, there's really two kinds of errors that our brain makes. And those are based on our thoughts and they're based on our emotions. And on the thought side, that can actually further be broken down into uh, two categories. One where we hold on to previous beliefs um, and one where we process information incorrectly. So, for example, if I grew up in a world where I just knew all chips were blue, this is what I know. This is all I know, to be quite honest. So if I was ever presented a situation where there's a red chip, well, that's really uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Because now I have to do some sort of admittance. I have to admit somehow that I've been wrong my whole life, and that's very uncomfortable. So our brains go through a lot of effort to somehow discourage this from entering our brain. It was, it's a fake. It's discovered incorrectly. Some version of that. So holding on to these beliefs, we go through a lot of work to hold on to our prior beliefs because new information is very uncomfortable. Or consider like a TJ Maxx or Marshalls or Ross or whatever you've got in your city. Here's another thing that we do. We, we pick up the item and it says this costs $49.99. Now what we don't do is say, now I wonder if this item is worth $50 to me or not. If it's worth more than $50, then $50 is a good value. If it's not worth $50, then I should keep the money and not get the item. We don't do that kind of comparison. What we do is we look at the other part of the tag up on the higher spot where it says, hey, compare at. Compare at $150. So now we... It's not an accident, by the way. This is very, very much on purpose. So instead of saying, I wonder if this is worth $50 to me, we say, wow, look at this $150 item that I can get for $50. What a great deal. So that's an, in a case where we process the information incorrectly. And again, this is not a secret to marketers. Now on the emotional side of the coin, uh, there's an example called it's called loss aversion. That's the jargon for it. Humans hate losing things. We hate losing. So if, if you told me that I could either gain a dollar or lose a dollar, losing a dollar hurts me about twice as much as gaining a dollar feels good. There's been examples done where they do experiments. So let's pretend we're doing an experiment and I say, I will either, you have two choices. I will give you $50 or you can flip a coin. And if it's heads, you get $100. If it's tails, you get nothing. Now, if you're like most people, you take the guaranteed $50 in that case. Let's play another game. Now I give you $100. After I've given you the $100, now we play a game. And the game is either you can give me $50 back, guaranteed loss of 50 bucks, or you can flip the coin. Heads. You get to keep all of it. Tails, you have to give it all back. Now, if, if you've done any kind of statistics or probability courses in your college days, you recognize those are exactly the same thing. In both cases, I either get $50 that I didn't have or I get a 50-50 chance at 100 or 0. But by giving the money to people first, they don't want to lose it. So they will take the chance, the 50-50 chance that they don't have to lose anything. So depending on how those games are played, people pick different options. 
So these are just a couple of examples uh, of how we make mistakes when we make big financial decisions or small financial decisions for that matter. So these, these biases they're called that we have, uh, they're more easily overcome on the thought side because emotions are rooted so much deeper in our brains. But in both cases, a little bit of awareness and a little bit of mindfulness can help us kind of counter these, these mistakes that our brain makes. And countering the mistakes that our brain makes, well, that's good money help. Thanks again for being with me today. If you liked the video, please click like. And if you like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing. You can do that either here on YouTube or at moneyhealth.blog. If you know anybody who is dealing with this kind of stuff, please feel free to share this with them. You can learn more at moneyhealth.blog, and that's where you can join the Money Health community. Money Health is supported in part by reader micro donations on Patreon. If you'd like to help keep Money Health ad free, you can pledge your support at patreon.com slash moneyhealth. If you'd like advice tailored to your specific situation, I can help you through Hagen Financial. You can learn more about Hagen Financial at hagenfinance.com. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.